Hi everybody, Chef Ellen with you again for another quick tutorial. Today we're going to focus on preserving your vegetables. late August and we have an abundance of vegetables and you might be getting just too many in your CSA share that you can possibly eat before you get the next batch next week. So I want to give you a few tips on how to preserve your vegetables. We're going to talk about tomatoes which of course you know are my favorites and um, I always love to prepare them in different ways so that I have them throughout the winter and it lets me enjoy the bounty of the summer into the winter. We're going to talk about zucchini, uh, cucumbers, onions, eggplants, peppers, scallions, and green beans. And I'm just going to tell you a few little tricks. Some vegetables you can cut up and just stick in your freezer without blanching. And then some vegetables you do need to blanch to preserve the texture and the color and flavor. So we're going to start with tomatoes. So let's get going. So the first thing you want to do is choose your container. You can use Ziploc freezer bags. These are very handy. You can use these really cool silicone sealing bags that are called stasher bags. They're great. They're, they can go in the freezer. They can go in the microwave. They can even do sous vide in water to defrost something. And so these are great. They'll work in the freezer. Or you can just use a plain old plastic quart container with a top. So I freeze tomatoes in all of these. Tomatoes in a Ziploc in a quart plastic thing. Now, if you don't want to end up with a clump of tomatoes that you have to defrost, you can just lay them out on a sheet pan with either silicone um, silpat pad or a piece of parchment. Lay your slices out and then freeze them and then put them in your container and that way they won't stick as much. So, the, so you just want to take the core out of your tomato and you could do one of two things. You could freeze it whole if you wanted. You can cut it up into slices, wedges, you know, a couple wedges, and then just put them on your sheet and then transfer them into your container. And the cool thing about freezing tomatoes is that when they defrost, the skin comes off. The fancy way to freeze a tomato would be to blanch it, which takes the skin off, but you don't have to do that because when you freeze it, it just comes off. So. Uh, another thing you can do with your cherry tomatoes is to roast them and then put those in a Ziploc or a plastic container. It's very, very simple. Put your oven on three, 375 or even 350, drizzle some olive oil on it, put in some herbs like a thyme. You could even put some chives, throw a couple cloves of garlic in it. Roasted garlic and tomatoes is fabulous. Cook it for about half hour, 45 minutes, and this is what you get. Beautiful roasted tomato goodness. Freeze it, use it now, but freezing is great. So let's talk about scallions and onions and garlic. These are my scallions that I just got today at the CSA, and maybe I have too many of them. So what I'm going to do is just cut them up into usable sizes and that might be tiny little pieces, it might be big pieces. And all I'm gonna do is throw them in a Ziploc, throw them in the freezer, and then I'll have them to use in a dish when I'm cooking something. They're not gonna be quite as crunchy as they are now, but you're gonna use them in cooking, so it's perfectly fine. Onions, the same thing. I would either cut them, you know, like, pole to pole or cut them in slices and then dice them. However you think you might use them, that way you've got them in a Ziploc bag or a container. You just open it up, 
they're right there. You can sprinkle them out and use them. What I like to do with garlic is I will um, either roast a whole head or I will take the individual cloves off and roast them. Similarly, peppers will also freeze without blanching. Again, cut them into whatever shape you think you're gonna use, put them on your sheet pan, stick it in the freezer, freeze them, then put them in your whatever container you're gonna put them in. If you have too many cucumbers or you wanna preserve them, what I like to do is make pickles. My daughter and I make bread and butter pickles every summer and they're so great. We put them on everything. So these are pickle cukes and this is what it looks like when, when they're finished. It's just very simple. This is a recipe with onions and peppers in it. I'll put this on the CSA website so you can take a look at it. It's super easy to do. You just cut your cucumbers into slices like this and you cook them in a brine that's made out of vinegar and water and some pickle spices and dill and things like that. You actually heat the cucumbers a little bit in your brine and then you put them in your container. You could use a ball jar like this, but these are refrigerator cukes. We're not gonna process them. We're not gonna get too crazy. Uh, again, like pickle cukes, you can make green bean, pickled green beans. And this is the beginning of making these. So I just put my, my beans in the jar. I put some garlic, little uh, spices like coriander and mustard seeds, add the brine and it pickles. It's, it's kind of a miracle. It's just this fun, fun project. It's great to do with your kids. And you could also make pickled zucchini. This is a great recipe. This went on the CSA website uh, already. If you want to make this pickle, you just take your handy peeler and you just peel along the length of your zucchini to make these lovely strips. And that's what you pickle. It's so easy. So unlike the zucchini pickles, if you want to freeze it, you want to slice it slice it or dice it or cube it, however you want to preserve it, and do a really quick blanch. So like 30 seconds in boiling water, drain it, and then pat it dry, put it in the freezer. So zucchini is one of those vegetables that you're going to want to blanch. It helps keep it fresher, actually helps keep it a little crispier. Speaking of blanching, there are a few vegetables that you're going to want to blanch because it, the blanching helps preserve the color and the texture of the vegetable. So we're looking at blanching cauliflower and broccoli, carrots, zucchini, as I mentioned before, and then also corn on the cob. So what is blanching? Blanching is immersing your vegetables for a very short period of time, say 30 seconds to one minute, in boiling water in it it does the certain thing to to the vegetables to help preserve them so the easiest way to blanch your corn would be to to blanch it on the cob so immerse your cobs in the boiling water take them out cool them off and then cut the kernels off sometimes what i like to do is just buy extra corn i steam it for my family and then i have a couple extra ears I just cut the kernels off and throw them in a Ziploc bag. Piece of cake, easy. The small kernels are very malleable in the bag and they're easy to use later. Finally, let's talk about eggplant. I think this is an eggplant year because we've had some beautiful, beautiful eggplants. So you can do a couple things with an eggplant to preserve it. You can slice it into lengthwise into strips and lay them on a sheet pan and roast them, and then freeze them already roasted, maybe in layers in a container. Otherwise, you could cook it, as I have here. I have uh, cooked at a very high temperature, say 450. I poked holes in the eggplant with a fork because if you, if you cook an eggplant in the oven at a high temperature and you don't poke holes in it, it could explode in your oven, which is a messy proposition. 
So this is roasted eggplant that the skin would, will come right off and you could make a whole bunch of different things with it and then freeze it. Or you could just freeze it like this. Um, and that's another thing to keep in mind is that when you're cooking something, if you make just a little bit extra, just freeze some portions of whatever you're making. Say if you made eggplant parmesan, make an extra little one and stick it in the freezer and you've got it for another day. It's so easy. The effort to make an extra one is so much smaller than starting from scratch. So keep that in mind. I hope this helped alleviate some of your anxiety over an abundance of vegetables that you might have on hand because that's what happens. In some years you get a lot of one thing and not so many of another. So take advantage of having a lot of something and preserve it. It's such a great way to enjoy your summer goodness of your vegetables in the winter. This is Chef Ellen saying thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. What is the word? <laughs> Don't put this in the outtake. Similar. Similarly. Similarly. <laughs> this is Chef Ellen saying thanks for joining us and come back. What is it? We'll, we'll, we'll see, see you again next time. Okay. <laughs>